Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Peter Navarro is the picture of a law abiding American citizen. He's a 72 year old retired business school professor. He's got a PhD in economics from Harvard University. His most recent job was extremely white collar. He served at the, as the White House trade advisor in the last presidential administration. Famous for his tough stance on China. He's never been charged with a crime. He's never trafficked fentanyl, for example, from Mexico. In fact, his hobby is yoga and riding his bicycle. In short, Peter Navarro does not seem like a criminal, much less a danger to this nation. And yet, last Friday, federal agents arrested Peter Navarro at Reagan National Airport in Washington. They did not call his lawyer, as is customary in cases like this. They didn't even come to his house, which as it happens is just feet from the FBI building. They could have walked, but they didn't. Instead, they took down Peter Navarro in public, as you would a fugitive terror mastermind, so everyone could see it and learn the lesson they were sending. Tucker Carlson's upset, actually not really, this is an act. Uh, he's upset about Peter Navarro being arrested for his potential part in what happened on January 6th, since he's been announcing over and over again his part in January 6th. You know, that whole thing when supporters stormed the capital of the United States and said we're gonna overturn this election and kill some elected officials, including the vice president. You know, that whole weird thing that wasn't a big deal. So anyways, uh, he, Peter Navarro and Tucker Carlson are both appalled about this whole reaction that they've gotten to him announcing potential crimes. Weird how that works, uh, but I don't want you guys to miss that one reference there. No matter what Tucker Carlson is talking about, he has to point out, hey, by the way, I'm still this uh, racist piece of garbage. Um, that I have to mention, oh, he's not a fentanyl carrier from Mexico. He's not a terrorist. Says who? You? This is the guy who's telling people the way they're supposed to think. But that just to insert that in there, he has to make sure that his audience still knows who he really is. So more about Peter Navarro because he's also upset and appalled about this. Let's hear what he has to say. Terrorist rocked me into a car, and the next thing I know, look, man, and leg irons, handcuffs, strip search. I mean, it was not without comedy. I mean, at one point, the FBI agents couldn't find the door to go into where I was supposed to go. The fingerprint machine didn't work. But, but it, you know, people do not want to sit in solitary confinement in leg irons, denied food, denied water, denied an attorney. And yeah, this is what we live in. I mean, I studied Kafka in college. It took me like till I was 72 to understand Kafka. We Navarro uh, has uh, no idea why they're doing this to him. It's uh, it's upsetting. They put him in cuffs. This is amazing. This is supposed to be reserved for people that we hate. You know, we told them lock everyone else up, except for when he does things like this, which describe a very well thought out plan. That was supposed to end with that insurrection. Watch this from Peter Navarro. And was simply this. We had uh, over 100 congressmen and senators on Capitol Hill ready to implement the sweep. The sweep was simply that. We were going to challenge the, the results of the election in the six battleground states. They were Michigan, Pennsylvania, uh, Georgia, Wisconsin, uh, uh, Nevada. And, and basically, these were the places where we believed that if the votes were sent back to those battleground states and looked at again, that there would be enough concern amongst the legislatures that m most or all of those states would decertify the election. Yeah, you just that described this plan as a way to take an election where the outcome was established by independent secretaries of state, by the voters of those states, and legal remedies have been exhausted with the Supreme Court never even taking, let alone siding with any of the claims that you just referred to. So legally, they went nowhere. And then you're describing a way that, that the incumbent, yeah, hold on, hold on, you will get your turn. I just let you go for a while. Let's go this back and forth, sir. <laughs> then you will use the incumbent losing party's power, that was the Republican Party that was losing power, to overtake and reverse that outcome. Do you realize you are describing a coup? <laughs> uh, Jackson, I'm just trying to figure out why this guy keeps getting a raw deal. I mean, he didn't do anything wrong, he went to Harvard. Well, you know, and that's supposed to be what makes all of his actions and viewpoints correct. Because of these accolades, because of the color of his skin, because of the people who he hangs out with. Therefore, everything by definition that he does is correct. But I think you know one of the more important things that you pointed out at the beginning of this is you know Tucker Carlson had to throw in you know he's he's not trafficking fentanyl you know from Mexico because <laughs> these are the people we really need to be concerned about. And it's like you know the reality is Tucker Carlson is 
one of the most pampered people you could ever meet. I mean, like, just not that there's much choice that he has, but he grew up, and he didn't grow up wealthy, he grew up extremely wealthy. That's all he knows. And, and, and you know, Navarro talking about being in jail, like, oh, they, the fingerprint things weren't working and all this, this, what, like, I mean, people live in and out of jail now. A lot of people may have earned their place in the prison system, but we have one of the more most arcane and you know just ridiculous prison systems in the world. So it's like, oh, now it hits you. So you know, this is this is the world we're living in now. Like Tucker, like dude, we've been living in this world. Yeah, not, the not drip, you, but yeah, the drip drip of knowledge that uh, folks like this always have whenever they've experienced a night in prison. They go, can you believe that there's cells? <laughs> you know, there's no stalls before I can go pee. Like it's right, always right. that like like he said you don't want to spend a day in solid in, in solitary confinement. It's uh, like you were in special prison. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like you weren't even in like prison prison where they throw the where they throw the ones that they're ashamed of. You know what I'm saying? Like so yes. it's just you know just what what they're a bunch of babies. More revelations. We'll see how it goes.